trying to decide whether I'm happy to be back in St. Cloud or not. <laughs> uh, in Boston, I'm known as Boston's oldest new comic. Uh, and <laughs> a little mixed message there, that's right. Uh, I'm also known as a political comic, but because uh, I do, I do a lot of political jokes. But I decided coming back to Stearns County that that was probably too dangerous to do political jokes. So, I'm not, so I decided to do religious jokes tonight. <laughs> Like uh, I'm sure many of you, I'm sure not all, but uh, I grew up Catholic, and uh, there's lots to make fun of the church because the churches can, can handle it, right? But uh, one of my favorite things is transubstantiation. <laughs> and you all know what that is, right? When Christ uh, changed uh, bread and wine into His body and blood at the Last Supper, and hey, it's you don't believe it, it's a mystery. You have to have faith, right? Um, and the big debate now is whether you can have a host for communion, the bread, right, that is gluten-free. <laughs> this is true, I'm not making this up. Uh, the uh, Congregation of Divine Worship in Rome has ruled that that is a non-starter. You have to have gluten <laughs> in the bread that's used at communion in Catholic. <laughs> so why is that? Well, an expert, professor at the Catholic University of America, and this is true, has said Christ did not use pizza and beer at the last supper. <laughs> well, I guess I knew that, but, but it's an interesting idea. Maybe he should have. Maybe that would have be better off. Right? He said he didn't use sake and sushi. Well, I guess we knew that too. Uh, that's why we had to send uh, the Jesuits over to Japan to try to, uh, to convert them. And he didn't even use uh, steak and coke. I'm not going to tell you But really, if Christ could change bread and wine into his body and blood, and we have to accept that on faith, does he really need gluten? <laughs> How can that be? <laughs> now, Rome has also got a thing going, and this is, uh, this is true, is that they've certified three bakeries in the United States to make hosts, and they're the only ones who, are, who can do them, but you can order them, but the, your parish priest can order them from them. And they are, and this is again true, uh, the Benedictine Sisters of Perpetual Adoration in Topeka, Kansas, are we all familiar with them? Uh, the Franciscan Friars and Bakers, of course. And my favorite in it is uh, uh, St. Joseph, no, not St. Joseph. Traitor St. Joe. <laughs> Someone got that one. Right. Now, if you look up, if you have time, you want to really get involved in Catholic culinary arts, uh, can, there's a, a, a website that tells you what you can bake or make each day of the year to be in sync with the Catholic calendar. And two of my favorites are uh, and this is one is Sacred Heart Cinnamon Buns. <laughs> and they're a cinnamon bun in the shape of a heart, obviously. And then coming out of each side is whipped cream. And on one side is whipped cream and blueberries, and the other side is whipped cream and strawberries. And it's supposed to symbolize the blood and the water that came out of the heart of Jesus when he was pierced with a lance when he was on the cross. That'll spoil your appetite or something else. But if, if that doesn't do it, uh, we can see that either you're getting time off in purgatory for eating that thing, or you're getting diabetes. Right? The, other, the other example is uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel feast. You're advised to make a rosary with caramel beads. Caramels for each of the beads. Isn't that sweet? <laughs> that's what it probably is. Uh, so, but in all, all of that, it's a mystery that you have to take on faith. Uh, and that makes it medical. Now, most mysteries we have are medical. I'm going to end with my favorite new pr procedure that uh, physicians are recommending. 
Well, not recommend him. What are you talking about? Which is a head transplant. You heard about this? Yes. Yeah, all right, look at that. Okay, Sergio Carnavara, who is an Italian surgeon, has proposed that he wants to do the world's first head transplant. Now, who would this be for? <laughs> And I thought about this, and I think it's, a, it's for people who have, are reasonably happy with their heads, <laughs> but are disgusted with their bodies. <laughs> it's, you know, way beyond where diet and exercise can help. <laughs> so how is this going to happen? Well, Sergio says what, the way it's going to happen is he's going to develop a super sharp knife. That's great sharp knife, and to cut the heads off, both the head of the donor, who hopefully is dead before you do this, right? Um, and the head of the recipient, the guy who's gonna get a new body for his head. And then he's gonna switch it real fast. <laughs> and, and this is true. <laughs> then he's gonna glue them together with super strong Elmer's glue off. <laughs> When ISIS does it, it's a war crime. When Sergio does it, it's science. Thank you very much.